In this video, we're going to take a look at graphing square root functions. Now, if we want to graph square root functions, we can use just the good old fashioned pick some points, put them in, see what the ordered pairs are, and that will help us as we get there. But there are a few things that we want to know about first. And the first one is all square root functions are derived from the parent function, or they're basically transformations of the parent function which is this f of x equals the square root of x okay so what does this look like well let's put in some numbers first of all are there any limits to what we can put in well yeah we can't have any negative numbers underneath the square root so the the smallest number i can put in there is zero so i'm going to put in zero and the square root of 0 is just going to be 0. So that first point is going to be right here at 0, 0 if I graph that. My next point, let's see, I want perfect square. <coughs> Excuse me, I want perfect squares so that the square roots work out nicely. So 1 is a perfect square. Square root of 1 is 1, so that would give me the ordered pair 1, 1. Next one, well, 2 is not a perfect square, 3 is not a perfect square, 4 is. Square root of 4 is 2, so that puts us up here. Okay, then our next perfect square would be 9, which actually takes me off my graph. But hopefully we can see here that we've got this thing, this shape, that looks sort of like half a parabola flipped on its side. This is the general shape that we're going to see in all square root functions. So be on the lookout for that and notice a few things. First of all, it never goes over here because we can't put in any negative values. And it's never going to go down here because we're not going to get out a negative value. This is asking for just the positive value, the positive square root there. So we're only going to get out those positives which yields that shape. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one right here and get an idea what that graph is going to look like. Okay, so again we should start by looking and seeing is there anything that I can't put in well negatives if I get in the negatives that's trouble so I'm not gonna be able to put a negative in so let's start with zero square root of zero is zero plus five is gonna give me and I'm just gonna jot down some ordered pairs here so my first point that I put in was zero right here is zero square root of zero is zero plus five is five okay then one's a perfect square so I'll put that in square root of one is one one plus five is six then let's see another perfect square two is not a perfect square so I'm gonna skip over that and the reason is because it's in decimal and it's really hard to graph decimals accurately so I try to pick out points that are gonna give me nice integers that I can graph that's why I'm choosing uh, my numbers pretty uh, selectively here next perfect square is four square root of four would be two two plus five is seven so I put in four for x got out seven alright so let's sketch a graph of that and see what's going on here um, we go first of all x equals zero and that's at five so one two three four five okay then one six so over one up 6 and then over 4 up 7 so over 4 up 7 it's gonna put me right here then I've got three points I know that this is as far as it can go this way it's not gonna extend over here because I can't put in negatives that yields me um, imaginary or complex numbers so I'm not gonna be able to go over there but my graph does extend oops if I can connect there in this direction so I put an arrow there and it has that same shape notice now hmm what do you notice here what's the difference between this one and that one shape appears to be the same this one has just moved up five do you see anywhere in here that we could get that up five huh right there we're gonna come back to that in a little bit but notice what happened there and it moved up five alright let's take a look at this one down here and on this one 
Well, again, I want to pick out some values, and I need to first figure out what the appropriate domain for this would be. So remember, to do that, we're going to set whatever's under e the square root here is up as an inequality, and that needs to be greater than or equal to 0. As long as this is greater than or equal to 0, we're good to go. So I'm going to subtract 3 here, subtract 3, then... I get x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so that means I can put in anything negative 3 and larger. So let's start with negative 3. So we have x and y. I'm going to put negative 3 in first here. So negative 3 plus 3 is going to give me 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Okay, so that'll be my first point. Then I want to get perfect squares under here, so we need to think carefully about what we should put in. Let's see. I want to get 1. 1's my next perfect square. So what's going to give me 1 under here? Well, if x is negative 2, I'd have negative 2 plus 3, which would give me um, that 1. So let's put in negative 2. Okay, so negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So there's another point. Now my next perfect square is 4, so what plus 3 gets me? 4, 1, so we're going to put in 1 for x, 1 plus 3 is 4, square root is 2. Okay, we've got three points, let's go ahead and sketch a graph of those. First point's negative 3, 0, so that's right here. Next point is negative 2, 1, that's right there. And my last point is at 1, 2, right there okay now I know this is as far as it can go because of what we found here with the domain the smallest thing we can put in is negative 3 so it's never gonna go farther to the left however it will extend off to the right here like so okay now what do you notice how did this yellow one come about as compared to the green one? How do they compare? Hmm. It appears the yellow one has just slid 3 to the left. Interesting. There's a plus 3. Notice the difference between these two. Under the square root, what's going to happen if we add something like this under the square root? That's going to move us left or right. If we add something outside the square root or subtract, that's going to move us up or down. Let's just take a quick look at that here. Um, we're going to use the uh, Desmos uh, graphing calculator. It's at abettercalculator.com. Um, great tool that we can use for in our study of math. And I've set up here already, this first one has the number inside the square root. And that's this uh, blue graph. Actually, they're right on top of each other right now, so you can't tell the difference. But notice what happens. Remember, we said under the square root, what's going to happen? It's going to move to the left. Look at, see what's happening to my graph? So this would be the same as graphing x plus, because this is negative, x plus 7.5. The graph is the same, it's just slid over to the left. Now let's notice if we go this way. Notice it's going to the right, going to the right, going to the right. Hey, so this would be the equivalent of graphing x minus 6, the square root of that, the square root of x minus 6. So that left or right movement if it's under the square root. Notice what happens here. The second one, I've set it up so that the uh, square root is just the variable, and then we're adding outside there. So... Let's see what happens. If we move into the negatives, oh, look where we're going. We're headed down. So this would be the same as the square root of x minus 5. We move down 5 units, not changing the shape, just translating it. Then if we go into the positives, oh, same story, going into the positives. There we are at 7, so this would be the equivalent, this purple graph of graphing the square root of x plus 7. Kind of cool to notice what's happening there as we make those graphs. Now, you can use that to help you understand and get a picture of what that graph might look like even before you choose points. 
as you're graphing these square root functions, in summary, what you want to do is, well, remember, the general shape is going to be this sort of half a parabola on its side. What we want to do is choose values for x to put in. Pick ones that are going to give you nice integer solutions. So whatever you can do to get a perfect square under that square root, that'll get you an integer coming out of there, which are much easier to graph than decimals. Then, just go ahead and graph those things. We can also graph more complex square root functions following the same methods. Look at the domain, see what you can put in, then go ahead, choose some things to put in, and plot your points, and off we go. Or, of course, uh, you can always use technology to check or um, do it in the first place, depending on what class and, and whatnot that you're working on. So be aware of that. Hopefully this video is helpful in terms of graphing square root functions. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.